Hello and welcome Million Mom Movement community. Woohoo! It is so good to be back. My name is Stephanie Dawn. I am the former chair of the Million Mom Movement community. I am a blue diamond with Purium Health Products, proud brand ambassador of this incredible superfood protocol that we're going to be talking a little bit about today. And um, yeah, I'm just thrilled to be back. I left last summer after a four year stint and um, some of the best years of my life. And I'm so happy to be joined by the OG council, uh, Naiva and Jody Parker today and our beautiful Leora, um, who we always used to call the fifth beetle. <laughs> it's really, really lovely to be here with you all today. And we have a powerful presentation uh, around how you can transform your pantry, your kitchen, your family life and health. And we have um, two-star crown, Carolina Teasdale, who's going to be joining us here momentarily. Cannot wait for, for you to be speaking up and raising your beautiful voice, Carolina. And before we do that, though, I want to um, welcome uh, Jody and Leora to please share the pledge. Hey everyone, so good to be back. So for those of us you who don't know, I was one of the original council members as well, right along with Stephanie and my daughter has been doing this since she was itty bitty tiny. And uh, so this is something we've done together quite a few times and I was excited she agreed to do it with me. Are we doing it one, one line at a time? We can just do it together. We're doing it together. All right. Here is the Million Mom Movement Pledge. Just to give you guys the information, in case you don't know, it's at millionmommovement.info. It's under movement right here under join. So that is where you will find the pledge. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody on your mute, say it with us. I, I pledge to defend the health of myself and my family. I pledge to choose organic foods that are minimally processed and free of man-made ingredients. I pledge to read labels and educate myself on all aspects of clean living. I understand that my actions today will positively impact the health and environment of future generations. I am committed to sharing this movement of many. I am the Million Mom Movement. And why is mom all in caps? Um, because it's the movement of many. And that means that aunts, uncles, teachers, whoever cares about clean living and stuff can join this. Stephanie, back to you. Love, love, love it. Ah, so good to see you, Leora. God bless you. And all of our children here um, who are connected to the Million Mom Movement, you are the reason why we are here. So uh, I think we're going to go ahead and share the in the news, Jode, if, if you're willing to do that now. This is a little segment that we developed at some point over the last year or so, where we share what's top of mind for us that we think is important for the field to know. So come on back, Jody. All right. Well, here I am. So I brought it all up on my screen so that you guys can all see it. It's right along with the pledge here but let's just take it one by one. So everybody see that spring cleaning is not only good for your house, but also your mood. Can we see that? All right, just making sure. So um, you know what? I am going to put the links for all of this into the chat. As soon as I'm done talking about it, I'm not gonna read it to you. You guys are all, you know, all adults, you can read through it. But the idea here is that when you go through your house and clean it, clutter clutters your mind right? And dirtiness, it makes it really hard to focus. And so going through your house this time of year is a perfect time to do all your cleaning and all your organizing. And we're talking about getting our kitchens organized and decluttered today. So this is a perfect segue into that. And I just so happen, let's see if we, is there more down here? Nah, I will, I will go ahead and post this and it goes into detail on that. But um, I happen to be a uh, feng shui practitioner. And I'll tell you what, it works. It definitely works. The number one rule of feng shui is clean it and fix it and clear your clutter. All right, moving on. Seasonal hormones. The shocking reason your skin should change or you should uh, change your skincare routine based on the season. So we're right in the middle of the seasons changing. And so it's just a really good time to make sure that you're aware of as you, you know, 
as the sun is out more and as the hormones shift with the seasons that you're paying attention to that. There's so much for us to talk about today. So I'm going to let you read into that further rather than taking you through it. But it's just something to keep in mind. You want smart kids? Don't leave without apparently that. Good parenting, brighter children. The 14 negative effects of sugar on kids and how to avoid it. I know that Seema is going to go into a lot of this during her talk today. So we don't need to go into details, but let's look at this main part here. Sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. I mean, do you really need to know more than that? <laughs> but the average American consumes 50 plus pounds of hidden sugar every year. And more manufacturers tell us that sugar is made from a natural source like sugar cane or sugar beet. And let's keep in mind that sugar beets are GMO. So we think it's okay, but just because it's natural it doesn't mean it's good for us. So there's all kinds of points, reading your labels, seeing the hidden sugars like corn syrup and fructose syrup, et cetera. She will go into this more. You will have this as a resource. We'll make sure and put it in the um, Million Mom Movement chat as, or I mean, the official group as well. And then I want to talk about this appeal. If you've been on social media for the last uh, about week or so, everybody is sharing a certain post that's talking about this new thing that was funded by Bill Gates that they're putting on the outside of our produce. And I want to show you something. That post is talking about this. This is a natural cleaner. It is not the appeal that is going on the food. And so there's some misinformation out there. And I'm going to go ahead and put these articles. This is Merkla, or excuse me, Western A. Price, talking about what it is and going into details on it because it looks like when you go to the appeal website, that they are using actual real foods to help protect the food and maintain food quality and have it last longer. Now, the, the jury's still out, you guys. We don't know enough to be sure, but the reason we wanted to bring this up today is because it's being shared everywhere. And when you're us and you're trying to change the world, you got to make sure you're getting your information correct. Because if you put it out there and people are like, oh, they're talking about an industrial cleaner and we get it wrong, then we lose credibility. And so I'm going to put all this stuff in there for you guys so you can check it all out. And uh, we can talk about it in the group page to see, do we feel safe with this? Do we feel comfortable by these mono and mono and diglycerides, these edible compounds that they are putting on the outside of food? It's being made from the micro peel, the cuticle structure that's found from leaves, stems, fruits, and flowers of plants and vegetables. So like I said, the jury's kind of out on this one, but make sure you do your homework before just blindly sharing those things on social media, because when we're changing the world, we got to make sure we get it right. Um, so I'm going to put those all in the chat, going to pass it back to you, Stephanie, uh, so that we can actually get into the meat of our talk today. Beautiful, super informative. Okay. So when I heard that we were talking about sugar today, I was like, phenomenal because I've had my own um, journey with uh, sugar addiction. Let's just be really, I'm going to speak very plainly here. Uh, before I found Purium, I struggled with candida overgrowth, which was caused by sugar. And we know everything breaks down um, into glucose, uh, everything that we eat, the body needs it to convert to glucose in order for us to be fueled. And so, um, so that's where it began for me, my education around sugar. And then those of you who do know me and have known my health journey for a while now, I received a breast cancer diagnosis four years ago. And that's when everything, like the massive stop sign happened in my life in terms of so much. And one of those things was sugar. And I have completely redesigned my pantry in support of living a, a, a no, you know, of not having refined sugar in my life and in my kitchen at all. So this is really important to me, sugar, um, refined sugar feeds cancer. And we're going to talk a little bit about the, the, the differences between different types of sugars today. So without further ado, I want to welcome our amazing two-star crown. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Her name is Carolina Teasdale. And um, she was born, I love this about you. She was born in Argentina to Italian parents, one of my most favorite countries on the planet. Um, she is a two-star crown with Perium, a former architect in California. That's what she was doing when I first met her several years back. 
who now feels that she has found her true calling and is proud to share our message with the world. And you've been rocking Instagram around sugar for a while now, Carolina. So we're so excited to have you join the Million Mom Movement community and share what you've learned and how you're supporting your organization, your clients to really, you know, move sugar out of their pantries and out of their life. Yes. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here, spending this next hour with us. And as Stephanie mentioned, I am an architect and actually I got a huge awakening one day because I was sitting in my office and I had a, a kickoff of a building. So we had the land use attorney, the engineer, HBNC system. We had all the uh, professionals to get this business going and we were eating chips with sandwiches, Coca-Cola and a bunch of junk. And we were talking about the materials of this building, whether it was going to be steel or concrete or, you know, what structure we were going to set this, uh, this building with. And in the back of my mind, I was telling myself, we're eating the worst building block materials for our body. And we're thinking about what materials are we going to make our building out of? And our, our house is our body. This is the only place that we have to live on the rest of our life. So how can we be designing buildings for sick people to walk in? And that's when I said, I need to do something. I need to bring awareness. Everybody always laughed at me for being the girl that comes into the office with five containers with my prepped food, right? Because I never like to eat out. I always like to cook everything and then bring it everywhere I, I want always carry my lunch bag and of course you're always made fun of if you're the healthy one right and and that's when I brought this up to my boyfriend at the time which is raw uh raw birth another crown of the company and he said you love to share health and wellness why don't you try Perium? is the easiest and most convenient way to bring awareness nutrition in a way that's sustainable for everyone that tastes super yummy and and that's how I got into this and I love the topic of today spring cleaning I think that when we make space there's new stuff that can come in and when we clean our space, when we clean our emotions, when we clean our things, we can not only strengthen our immune system, we can avoid illnesses, we can reduce our stress. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I love to keep my office clean. And if my office is not clean, I can't start to work. I can't be productive. The energy is too cluttered. And I make the time to clean all the time and not only clean our houses, but clean our pantry, clean our diet. I believe that we should always be eating the foods that's on season, the fruits that are in season, the fruits that the earth is giving us at this time, because they have certain nutrients, that, certain vitamins and minerals that we need during this time and with the environment changes. So yes, I will, I will love to talk about sugar during the next couple of minutes. And I do have a couple of things that I want to talk about. All right, some of the five uncommon reasons why the refined sugar is bad. I also want to make the distinction between refined sugar and fruit sugar, because when I started in this business, a lot of my clients are terrified to eat fruits because they think that they're going to gain weight because fruits have too much sugar. So there's a very big difference between refined sugar and fruit sugar. Then you wouldn't believe I found over 50 different names for sugar. All right, it's I know there's more, but I was able to find 50 different names for sugar. And those are hidden sugars, right? Because we don't identify the name, then we don't know that sugar is actually in our products. And, and I'm going to give you five uncommon products that have hit, hidden sugar. You wouldn't think they have sugar and their sugar content, and they're going to blow your mind. Okay. So Stephanie, is there, can I move forward or is there anything you want to add? Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Back when I was in architecture school, one of my colleagues, uh, friends at the time, one of his dad was a, a brain surgeon. And he once told me that sugar is actually glucose is actually essential for proper function of our brain. So I want to just share with you guys to not be afraid of sugar, do not be afraid of glucose, we actually need it to be healthy. But not all sugar is created different. And sugar 
satisfies our taste buds, right? And is nurturing to our soul. It's soul food. That's why it's so addicted. Sugar to me, it's a reminder to savor the sweetness of life, to enjoy every moment and to be mindful of the choices that we make. And like I mentioned, not all sugars are made the, sa the same and some kinds of sugar, like refined sugar and many other sugars I'll talk about do have a negative effect on our physical and our emotional and in our spiritual being in all parts of what we, of who we are. So it's important to create a balance and educate us. And thank you, Stephanie, uh, Jody, Naivea, for putting this together because we need to bring this awareness because I am surprised. I just came from Florida and I was amazed at the lack of organic and healthy resources in the whole state. I had to drive at least 30, 40 minutes to get to an organic place where organic was even limited. And that is the truth that we're all leaving on. Thank God my parents leave close to a Sprouts, which is the healthiest option. And Sprouts is not even the greatest thing here in California. So it's uh, it's kind of sad. And, uh, and sugar is something that all of us are consuming, even kids. Kids are heavily exposed to sugar because it's highly addictive. And as Jody just mentioned, yes, sugar is so extremely addictive. And that's because of the impact that it has in the brain. It has a reward system that when we consume sugar, it triggers the release of dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter associated with pleasure and reward. When our body releases this dopamine, it creates a feeling of pleasure and it reinforces the behavior of consuming more sugar, okay? Sugar also creates a very refined sugar, actually, creates a super rapid spike in our sugar levels, we, which creates a crash in our energy levels. So when we're feeling that crash, what do we do? We eat more sugar so we can have that energy boost. Back when I was in college, I had no idea about sugar. And every time I needed energy, I would drink a Coca-Cola. Okay, that was my go drink for my energy because I had to get through exams, pinups, models, presentations, and I would go for a Coca-Cola. I remember there was a line at the vending machine in my architecture school because we all needed energy for that long night of work. So this cycle of, of uh, dopamine release creates this heavy addiction to, to sugar. sugar. Sugar is actually as addictive as opioids and cocaine. Isn't that crazy? So the more that we consume sugar, the more that our brains are able to adapt to high levels of dopamine. And it creates a tolerance. So we always need more and more sugar. It's this vicious cycle that is very hard to get out of. And I remember when I cut sugar and when I cut caffeine, I thought I needed to be hospitalized because we also go through detox symptoms. We go through withdrawals of sugar without even knowing, all right? So sugar could be super highly addictive. And what I hate about sugar is, is the withdrawal symptoms because that's the same thing symptoms that our clients go through when they do the ultimate lifestyle transformation, when they're cleansing, when they're detoxing, even when we're decluttering, how many times we move the book or a pot or something and then in there, right? It's like, is this sense of addiction and the, 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 we draw symptoms that a lot of us experience is, um, headaches. That's a huge one. Okay. That is a huge one to me. My headaches, my migraines were out of control and, and I just had to go through them because I knew that I needed to go through those headaches in order to completely eliminate that sugar from my life. So Jody, uh, uh, Stephanie, can I keep going? You want to add something or should I just keep moving forward? Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> I wasn't sure if this is like Leslie back and forth. All right. So five uncommon reasons why refined sugar is bad. So one, one of the reasons why sugar, it's terrible, it's because it contributes to inflammation. And a lot of us experience with inflammation. And I, I believe that one of the main reasons why our customers in the ultimate lifestyle transformation reduce the inflammation, it's because the power shake helps us reduce our cravings. It balances our sugar levels and inflammation goes down. 
So the excessive consumption of refined sugar has 100% be related to inflammation. So if we want to drop the inflammation in our body, we literally need to take a look at our refined sugar intake. The second reason why sugar, it's terrible, it's because it disrupts our gut bacteria. Stephanie, you mentioned you had candida when you started this. That is a very common symptom that a lot of us are experiencing and we don't even know. So studies have shown that refined sugar can negatively impact the balance of good bacteria in the gut, which creates a lot of digestive issues, mainly bloating, gas, and constipation. And you will never believe it's linked to refined sugar. All right, so bloating, gas, constipation, take a look at your amount of refined sugar. The other thing that refined sugar does, and for all my ladies, it causes premature aging. If you're working on your anti-aging, if you're taking the Renew Hair and Skin and Nails, the Sour Tart Cherry, Bio-Region, Bio-Relax, you also need to take a look at re your refined sugar intake. Because what happens is that refined sugar causes the formation of advanced glycation in the body, which, which damages the protein of the skin, creating premature aging. So you want to look younger, you want to have more vitality, cut the refined sugar. And we all know that refined sugar creates mental problems, all right? Too much sugar can increase depression, anxiety, and other mental issues. And then lastly, we all know this from when we were kids, hopefully we do, sugar is bad for our teeth. All right. It creates tooth decay and it could harm, it could feed actually the bacteria in our mouth. And when the bacteria of a mouth is being fed, we create cavities. Okay. So that that's five uncommon reasons why refined sugar is bad. And now I want to talk about something that I'm passionate about, which is refined sugar versus fruit sugar. Okay. And refined sugar and fruit sugar are actually both known as fructose. And these two kinds of sugar actually have totally different effects in our body. Refined sugar is also called table sugar or sucrose. And it's the type of sugar that is extracted from sugar cane or sugar beets. Like Jody was saying, sugar beets are actually from a GMO. Isn't that terrible? And it's highly processed. Refined sugar has been stripped of all of its nutrients and especially fiber. So refined sugar, no nutrients, no fiber. And it's added to all of the processed foods, such as sodas, candies, baked goods, even milk had sugar. And because refined sugar is so quickly to be absorbed into the bloodstream, what, what refined sugar does is that it creates an increase uh, in blood sugar levels, okay? So now, in, the, in contrast, fruit sugar, which is also a fructose, is a type of sugar that is found in fruits and vegetables. And unlike refined sugar, fruit sugar is not processed. And it has nutrients. It has fiber, which is actually very efficient for the body. And it actually has a lot of electrolytes. So in my opinion, when people ask me, what's the best kind of water that you could ever drink? I always say fruit, fruit water. Eat some watermelons, papayas. Papayas are super high in folate. I mean, the, all of our fruits have so much hydration on them. I once did a dry fast, no water no, for 36 hours, no brushing the teeth, no showering, no exposure to water. And I broke my dry fast with fruit. It was the best thing ever. It was it was, I don't know how to explain it. It was just magic to my body. Fruits have all that hydration. So when we consume that sugar from our fruits, we're also having that fiber. And what it does is that the fiber slows down the absorption of fructose. Unlike refined sugar where the, the, the sugar goes straight into your blood. It's instant. The, the fruit has sugar that gets absorbed very, very slowly because of the fiber content. And what it does it, is that it helps us balance our sugar levels. 
So we're actually balancing our sugar levels when we're eating fruits. That's why I had a lot of customers that have they're diabetic and they actually balance their sugar levels eating fruit because it has that fiber. And on top of that, our fruits have that glucose and they're filled with antioxidants. And what do antioxidants do? They help us fight the free radicals. They help us fight and battle the diseases. So the two kinds of sugar are extremely different. And I strongly recommend that you guys do get into your sugar cravings with fruit. And that's what I've been doing in my house. If I, I used to be a cookie monster, my parents owned bakeries back in my country. So I always had to have cookies and croissants and sweets, and I crave them all the time. And when I did this transition, I, I started eating fruit and I loved berries. I picked the fruits that I liked the most and I don't buy things that I don't want to eat. So I don't want to be tempted. So I simply don't buy it. I filled my kitchen with fruit. And what I do, if I ever have a craving for a cookie or something sweet, I eat dry mangoes. There's dried fruit, obviously in moderation, but just having that dry mango, that crunchiness in my mouth helps me crave that sugar. It does have that fructose. It doesn't have the water, but it helps me not go for the unhealthy option. And then I get familiarized with healthy options. So I make my own sweets at home and I use... Um, uh, what did I use? I use monk fruit and I also use maple syrup. I started using a little maple syrup and that's perfect. If I want to add a little sugar into my cacao, my golden latte, that is the best option for me and, and for raw. But once you start cleaning your palate from the refined sugar, you're not craving sugar. You actually enjoy things without sugar. So most of the things like I never add sugar into my teas, even if I drink a cup of coffee, I actually enjoy the flavor a lot more without sugar. So you clean your palate slowly. And some of the distinctions between refined sugar and fruit sugar, it's not only the nutritional value, okay? Because refined sugar is a simple carbohydrate, which product provides no nutritional value. And instead, fruit sugar has those carbohydrates with all the addition benefits to it. Also, the glycemic index. I know there's a lot of people that struggle with SIBO and different problems, digestive issues. They do take a look at the glycemic index, which is what measures how quickly food rises the sugar levels in the body. Okay, so the, the fruit sugar means that the, 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 the sugar is absorbed so slowly that it does not cause any increase in our sugar spikes. So the glycemic index on fruit sugar, it's excellent. And then our metabolism, refined sugar, I mentioned this before, I'll say it again. Uh, when we consume refined sugar, it metabolizes quickly in the liver. And because the liver metabolizes that sugar so quickly, it gets released into the bloodstream as glucose. And this can, again, increase the blood sugar levels, immediately releasing a lot of insulin, a hormone that helps regulate the blood sugar levels. And over time, what happens when we are consuming all this refined sugar, it can lead to an insulin resistance, which can increase our risk of, of di diabetic, becoming a diabetic. So it's super important that we do control that. I'm not saying completely eliminate refined sugar. You can have it once in a while, but don't create a resistance because when you create that resistance, you have a high chance of becoming diabetic, All right? Uh, so some of the names I'm not gonna share with you. Actually, I can put all 50 names in the chat, but some of the possible names for sugar, it's sucrose, glucose, fructose, dictose, lactose, high uh, fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, cane sugar, beet sugar. Um, there's just so many. I will put them, actually, I put them on the Facebook group so everybody can have access to that. So some of the, and I have one more thing before I pass it back to Stephanie. Refined sugar can be hidden in so many products. It is insane. Almost everything has sugar. Even if you buy grass-fed raw milk 
which people think is healthy, it had sugar on it. So some of the 10 uncommon products that I have found that have sugar on them and the approximate sugar content is extremely high. One, salad dressings, can baked beans, yogurt, actually tomato sauce has an insane amount of sugar. Most brands of tomato sauce in half a cup has about six teaspoons of sugar. Okay. Yogurt also, most yogurts have about six teaspoons of refined sugar. Salad dressings, one serving typically has about two teaspoons of sugar. Granola, that is huge. Granola is often promoted as a healthy snack, but many brands are adding so much sugar that most granola bars have about seven teaspoons of sugar. Same thing with teams. Protein bars, most of them have about eight teaspoons of sugar. Instant oatmeal. So most instant oatmeals have about three teaspoons of sugar. I mean, I can't even imagine having one teaspoon of sugar in my mouth and we can easily eat it on a bar. Most flavored coffee drinks have about 12 teaspoons of sugar. So most flavored coffee drinks that we buy at the store is 12 teaspoons, which is about 48 grams of sugar canned fruits, even if they're organic, have about seven teaspoons of sugar. This is another one, teriyaki sauce. I, it's been over 15 years since I've eaten teriyaki sauce, but most uh, teriyaki sauces or, or dipping sauces have about two tablespoons of sugar in, in, in eight grams. So it's a tiny, tiny little amount and it's super concentrated. And some examples, and I know a lot of most of us are not using this ones, but um, let's say yogurt that I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it, Danan or Kyobani Greek yogurt, they have about 15 grams of sugar. And let me see, I think that's about four teaspoons. Most the, the, the Kyobani yogurt, I remember my mom, I used to buy those. They have four teaspoons of sugar. Um, granola, the most common brand, Nature Valley, or the kind vanilla. Those have about three teaspoons of sugar. So Nature Valley, I remember eating those Nature Valleys. Three teaspoons of sugar. Cliff Bars. I used to eat Cliff Bars all the time, especially when I was an athlete. Every Cliff Bar has about five teaspoons of sugar versus an RX bar that have over, it has barely half a teaspoon of sugar. So there are many options that don't have that much sugar. Starbucks, the Starbucks caramel frappuccino has about 11 teaspoons of sugar. So if you're a Starbucks fan, every frappuccino has about 11 teaspoons of sugar. Dunkin' Donuts caramel swell iced coffee, especially if you're in the East Coast, Dunkin' Donuts everywhere. Every caramel swell iced latte has about eight teaspoons of sugar. I mean, there's, it's just insane. The amount of sugar, I have a lot of, a lot of different examples. I'll put them in the Facebook group, but I want to pass it to you, Stephanie, if you have any questions. This is so good. Oh my gosh. You're pretty much describing like the awareness that happened for me when I got the candida overgrowth about um, seven, eight years ago, everywhere I turned was sugar. And I actually went off sugar 100% and I went off fruit too, which was like, I, I didn't know what I know now, but I went off um, so many things for three months. It was one of the most difficult three months of my life. And I was just shocked by how many products had sugar in them for myself, but also for my children, because, you know, I was buying these products like ketchup, organic ketchup from Trader Joe's packed with sugar. So this has been a huge part of my own transition in my own pantry is um, making my own salad dressings, making my own sauces. You mentioned teriyaki. <laughs> I make my own teriyaki now and I use um, sugar alternatives. So 
um, will you speak to that in your own pantry, what you've done? Uh, in I, you mentioned maple syrup and you mentioned monk fruit. Do you have any other um, flavors or, um, you know, any other sugar alternatives that you add instead of sugar? And monk fruit. Monk fruit, sometimes I use coconut sugar and maple syrup. Those are mainly the three options that I use mm -hmm. where we don't have a huge sugar palette. As a matter of fact, every time I make cupcakes and muffins for my family, no one eats them <laughs> because they're not sweet enough. And to me, I bring them back home and Rod's like, we got cupcakes for the week. Yeah. Uh, but we just got used to not eating so much sugar. So maple syrup will be mainly the one that I use. And then when it comes to milks, I tend to make my own milk. Mm. I, I sprout my nuts and then I put them in the blender and I make my own sprouted cashew milk, my sprouted Brazilian nut milk. And that way I have full control of what I'm consuming. So it is a lot more work, but because I'm not constantly cooking, because I'm in the ultimate lifestyle transformation all the time, my body's not hungry. And that gives me the extra energy to be able to prep these little things here and there. Like this morning I made, because I'm going to Earth Day at Dave Sandoval's land. So yeah. I said, I'm just going to take my milk. So I made my nut milk. I put it in a glass container. I put it in my cooler. And if I go out anywhere, I make sure that I have everything with me at all times. So we're very simple. Actually, in my household, we've done a lot of work during the last 15 years into cleansing or diet cleansing our pantry. So our refrigerator, if it doesn't have fruit and vegetables or anything that's not fresh, it's empty. So right now my fridge is kind of empty, but we, we, we are very simplistic when it comes to our eating habits, but it took us a lot of years. It was a long process mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's patience. We just have to be patient. It can't happen overnight, completely cleansing our whole house from our makeup, cleaning products, candles that I'm burning in my house to everything. I mean, even furniture, when we buy new furniture, they have all those chemicals. So open up your windows. We never sleep with our windows closed. We always sleep with our windows open. We always want those fumes and we're very sensitive to all those fumes, even from furniture. So you, we just clean everything, our, our, our hair products. Uh, we, I thank God we have a lot of topic, tropic oil in our kitchen because we're consuming the, the coconut oil we're using in our skin. Uh, when people ask me what kind of lotion you use or coconut oil, I have coconut oil in every bathroom in my house, in the kitchen. And if, I, if I'm putting it in my skin, I actually should be able to eat it. If I can't eat it, I'm not putting it in my skin because my skin is also eating. My skin is actually breathing Okay, I took a course one time with Montak Dia. He's a Qigong master in Thailand. And we did a whole session and, and breathing through our skin. Our skin is porous. The, the clothes that we wear, the frequency of the clothes that we wear. And we can talk about this actually in another, in another day. Every fabric has a different vibration. So you want to be able to amplify the vibration of your body through the fabrics that you're wearing. Where, where are you sleeping? We spend most of our day i mean some of us sleep more than we're awake and we have exposure to the fumes in our mattresses we're constantly inhaling our mattress as we're sleeping our pillows our our, our bedding so there's so many things that we change in our household from grounding and bringing plants and we have 85 plants inside my house we count them we keep track because they purify the air. On top of that, we open the windows and we have an air purifier. We see chemtrails outside. We close all the windows. We turn on our molecule air purifier. And it's been a transition of many years to get to the point that where we are now. And as far as cleaning the kitchen, I throw, when I started, I threw everything away because I don't want to be tempted to use it from spices. Oh, sugar. There's so much sugar hidden in spices and condiments in the kitchen. So much. The tea bags, never buy a tea bag on a plastic bag. You're putting hot water in that plastic bag. And there's hundreds of organic companies that have their teas and their herbs on a plastic bag. And it's not only the plastic, it's the glue that they use in the plastic. And we're putting this hot water 
into our tea. So I started buying loose herbs and I put them in my glass containers and all my glass containers are off the light because light ruins our superfoods. So I never put any superfoods in a clear container. If they're in a clean container, they're inside of a cabinet. I don't let light hit my foods because light oxidates our food and our herbs and our teas and everything. And the glass jars that we're using, most glasses actually have chemicals on them, believe it or not. So not all glass options are healthy. Most glass have chemicals on them. So it's, it's, we can take it to multiple levels deeper on how to completely cleanse our house. But these are some examples that I take in my house when it comes to even stainless steel, yeah. what pan, iron, um, an iron casted skillet, too much iron also depletes our body from nutrients. So there's so many things to pay attention when we're cleaning our kitchen. Yeah. Thank you, Seema. It really is an evolution. It certainly has been for me. And so practicing patience and, you know, I, I, I think of the words of Amy Venner, our, our, the beautiful founder of the Million Mall Movement. And, you know, she always talks about good, better and best, you know, and so we're not expecting you to go from good to best, you know, immediately. If, if, if this is sort of like, I don't know, some of you might be like, like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. We get it. You know, so um, it's just about incrementally shifting your habits, shifting your 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 purchasing power, really, to make those good, better, and best uh, choices every week. Right, every week we we buy food. Um, so uh, yeah, gosh, Carolina, it's so good to have you here. This has been super valuable, and I know you're heading off to Dave's. Um, land shortly. Can you stay with us for a little bit longer as we do a, some Q and A? Because I kind of I want to bring Jody in too, because Jody is sort of like I used to call her Doctor Jody, because she <laughs> she really walks her talk in terms of her kitchen and um, and there also were some questions in the chat that I wanted to broach. So can you can can you can can you yes. stay with us for the hour? Okay, definitely. Then. Yeah, that would be amazing. So one of the questions, and you can answer, and then Jode, I want to bring you back on. One of the questions in the chat was about juicing. So I'd love to hear, you know, obviously juicing removes the fiber of fruit. So would you speak to that in terms of how you coach your clients and the folks in your organization? Yes. So when it comes to juicing, the truth is that most people don't have the time to juice. That's why I strongly encourage the power shake and the, the bio fruits and all the fruits. So usually when my clients want to juice, I, I don't put restrictions on them because I know that if they are not foods, they're not going to be buying 20 pounds of oranges to make 64 ounces or less of juice, right? They don't have the time. And the whole goal is for them to simplify their life and make it extremely convenient. So I tend not to have the conversation because most of my clients are not juicers in the first place. And if they do want to juice, maybe their body is a little bit on the acidic end and the power shake might not be to their taste. So what I encourage is to put some berry some dates make it a little sweeter so, uh, that's another thing that i use uh, dates i like to sweeten with dates as well and and then they mix it a little sweeter it changes the flavor i always tell them you can make it a pina colada just add some pineapple some mango some trop tropical fruit make it taste super yummy and you're gonna love it and i rather than become a little bit addicted to that than to having their typical naked, naked juice or whatever from the store. So I don't typically have that much conversation. And if they do juice a little bit, it's not, it's the goal is to add our products. And as they are on our lifestyle, they're going to be eliminating, like Dave says, addition by subtraction. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I love drinking orange juice. And I buy 40 pounds of oranges every week because I'm with my husband. So we both drink our, our orange juice in the morning and right. it, I, we love it. It helps us. It helps the, the citrusy. It helps our liver. It helps our, our, our happiness, right? I want everybody to be happy. That's 
the most important vitamin that I tell everyone, I want you to have your vitamin L, which is your vitamin love, your vitamin P, which is your vitamin pleasure, your vitamin L, which is your vitamin love and S slow down because we are also eating our emotions. And if we are super angry because we can't have our sugar, that's actually, in my opinion, way worse because it's creating cortisol, it's disrupting their hormones, it's creating that extra stress that I don't want them to feel. So I invite them to take a look at the vitamins that they're taking from their emotions. Yeah. And I, and you know, ultimately food is going to do with us what we intend it to be, right? I I'm strongly believe that we create everything. So if I tell this pizza, it's going to make me unhealthy and fat the next morning, I'm going to wake up sick and fat versus enjoying the moment and just saying, this is going to feed my soul. I'm going to feel so good because I'm going to feel so good. I'm actually going to attract more abundance. And that's what he does. So be very careful with the thoughts that you're giving yourself when you're consuming your food, because it's going to create just that. Yes. Amen, girl. Awesome. This is so good. So rich, such a rich conversation. All right. I want to bring um, my colleague, uh, Jody Parker back on because Jody, I know that you, I know how you are in the kitchen and I know how important this conversation is to you. So would love for you to just chime in with what you've heard and anything you want to underscore as a mom of three and how you've really altered your own pantry and kitchen over the years. Sure. I'm, I'm happy to jump in. Thanks. And Seema, great job. Oh, sorry, Carolina. I know you've changed that. <laughs> I messed up. So I apologize. Um, yeah, I'm happy to talk about that. So the smoothie juicing thing, uh, I think the best way to break that down is juicing is appropriate when you need really, really intense nutrients all at once to really rebuild. And so that's a lot of the reason why people do it. But I agree with what she said in the sense that Purium is so much easier and it's all ready. It's still live food, right? It still has the enzymes in it. It's why we make it as we go instead of letting it sit. And so it's just so much easier. And then you don't have to get rid of all the pulp and clean it. Cleaning a juicer is a pain. You know, I mean, if you want to use that pulp in your garden or something like that, then that's a great idea. If you want to bake it into muffins or pancakes or whatever, then do so. But it takes a lot of time. It's a lot of cleanup um, and you have to use a lot. And perium is just so much simpler to use. And with smoothies, they asked about juicing versus smoothies smoothies are going to have your fiber in it. Right. And like, I have one that I make pretty much every day and I mix almost every period product we have <laughs> with, I throw my Brazil nuts in for the selenium content. I throw my hemp seeds in because getting those omega threes is really important to me. I throw extra cacao in because I like chocolate. Um, and it's a superfood too. Um, and so you can really play with the flavors. And I know Steph, that that's probably something you want me to talk about. I'm like the master mixer with the Perian products. And there are so many combinations and people kind of get stuck in their power shake combination, but like, uh, a new thing that I've been doing is mixing the dark berry protein with the bio fruit and the apothecary into like a cashew, like, like organic cashew yogurt. Or if you just want to use like a coconut milk and use a small amount of liquid instead of the large amount of milk liquid, you're still going to get like a yogurt consistency. And it reminds me of those old fruit on the bottom yogurts because you mix the, the apothecary into it and it looks like that. And it has that sort of tart, sweet flavor. And I could even get my kids to eat it, but you're getting your protein and all your antioxidants and, you know, all the anti-inflammatory benefits. There's a lot of ways you can go. The other thing I want to mention is I know a lot of people are really into juicing celery and uh, the purium, like replacement for that is the barley greens. Do the barley green juice on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. The biggest difference between the two is um, celery has more sodium content, more salt. Um, and barley greens are going to have more potassium. They're also going to have more of the B vitamins. They're really great for nursing mamas. Um, but the one thing that I found when I started Perium was I was drinking so much greens. I was getting so much potassium. I was throwing my sodium levels out of balance. And so sometimes you might want to add a little bit of sea salt in there. If you're really thirsty and you keep drinking and it's not fixing it, you might actually need some sodium when you take away the processed foods, 
um, then you, you don't get as much salt in your diet and you need it salt. So it's a three to two ratio, three potassium for two sodium. So you do need it. It's necessary. So I'll throw that out. I think that's enough information. I'm going to overwhelm and I'll toss it back to you, Steph, with the next question. So good, Jody. Thanks. Um, great to hear your voice. Uh, so we have a few minutes left here and, um, I wonder if there are any questions from the field while we have Carolina and Jody here, uh, and Naiva and myself too. Any questions around anything that's been mentioned, or if you're confused about anything? Um, you know, it's it, it, like I said moments ago. Like it does take time to transition, and you know, you might go, "Oh, well, I just bought a little stuff. I just bought some, you know, organic." Uh, catch up. I don't want to chuck that out right away. We're not asking you to do that, right? But we are asking you to just start paying attention to look and see what's in the uh, products that you're purchasing and how maybe you can start looking at recipes um, that you could be making sauces out of or, or dressing. I don't buy salad dressings anymore. Like I full on, I just make salad dressings or better yet, I mash together avocado with lemon juice and I'm done. <laughs> That's my salad dressing. Um, so, uh, you know, being in this community has really supported me in making healthier choices. And the other thing that I really want to speak to too, and, you know, I see a hand raise, so I'll go get to you in a moment, Amanda, is that we, um, you know, we, uh, the, the sugar cravings for me that I had, you know, eight years ago when I was dealing with the candida, when I first started Purium, these green foods, these protocols that we're taking, this ultimate lifestyle transformation, it effectively removes the sugar cravings. Your body, your cells are getting nurtured on such a deep level. It's like the body doesn't need sugar. It needs energy to fuel itself. And so that was really eye-opening for me. And and um, you, you just don't crave it like I once did, you know, I mean, I used to sit down after dinner and have like, I was like, I was like a cookie monster, Carolina, I would sit down and have like five cookies after dinner and not think twice about it, you know, so <laughs> those days are long gone. Um, let's bring you on, Amanda, you have a question. We just need to unmute Amanda. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Welcome. Okay. Hi. Okay. So my question is, Carolina mentioned that some glasses aren't good. Is that like, are you talking about when we first buy glass or like, can it be cleaned? Like if you clean it before you use it, are you safe or is Oh, she's muted. There we go. I'm unmuted, right? Yes, go for it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what I mean that there are some um, glasses that we use every single day that have um, some chemicals on them. And there's, um, let me remember, there's some glasses that that have silicone dioxide and they're very common uh, they have calcium oxide and other components so there's actually there's even uh, some glasses in my house that had a sticker that said this glass is not i forgot the chemical free and that's what interested me and i said what do you mean this glass doesn't have this is not free of this chemical so i started looking into glass and most glasses have certain chemicals on them so it, it really, it's the most important when you are putting hot things into glass, same thing with your, your, all of okay. your dishware, you know, it's, if it so has you, color. And if so your if you have glass that you're storing your superfoods in, like if you're walking, you, if you're, so, if you wash it and then store your superfoods in it, you'll be safe. <laughs> Yes, 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 because you're not heating up the glass. You're not putting okay. like hot water right. on it or anything okay. like that. But if you do have a um, dishware in your house, do take a look at it because most ch like China dishes that have color, those colors are made out of chemicals. And when you're putting your hot 
food into a plate wow. that has all this coloring, you are releasing all those chemicals. So it's very, very common. Most dishwares have chemicals on them, so just fine. Uh, I, I buy mine from Fabel, Fable, Fable, something like that. And they're handmade with natural ingredients. They break easy because obviously it's made with natural ingredients. So they're not as hard as the other ones filled with chemicals. But do take a look at there. And if you Google, there's a lot of information about it. Try not to put hot food into a plate with colors. Okay. And then I just uh, want to know, do you recommend a specific um, air purifier? Because I would like to look into that. So do you recommend a brand specifically? I use Molecule Air. They're really good. Thank you. Yeah, Molecule Thank you. Air. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Eric is another good brand to look into. That's what we have in our house. Will you go ahead and put those brands in, um, in the chat, ladies? Okay. Yes. All right, so we're wrapping it up here. Unfortunately, we don't have time for another question. I'm sorry, Shannon. Uh, you can certainly ask it in the chat. I'm going to pass the baton back to Naeva Flore. And uh, thank you again, Naeva, for bringing me on today. She's going to do our call to action and close us out here. Thanks, Million Mom Movement community. Mwah. And thank you, Carolina, for your time. And Jody, we appreciate you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, everyone, for having me today. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Stephanie, for um, hosting us today. And thank you, Jody, for the in the news and sharing your knowledge. And Carolina, thank you so much for sharing so much valuable information around sugar and the effects of sugar and some alternatives that we can use and just really giving us some tools that we can incorporate into our life as we're spring cleaning our cabinets and trying to make healthier choices. So many of us are currently doing 90 day ultimate lifestyle transformation and encouraging that in our community. And one of the biggest contributors in all of our foods is sugar. And so we felt like this was a really great topic to cover. Just give everybody some tools and some knowledge about the effects of sugar and the fact that it's literally everywhere. So thanks for sharing so many incredible products that you know are not incredible products but products that contain sugar and so much incredible knowledge um, around that subject because sometimes I feel like we overlook the certain things and you named all kinds of things today that we could just like start to really look at and take a deeper look as we're going shopping and you know slowly make those transitions and we know it can be challenging to transition overnight and you know some of us can empty our cupboards and start brand new but otherwise, if you feel like that's not something you can do, take it one step at a time. Start with one area of your home at a time, one cabinet at a time. Maybe, you know, start with the fridge and then the cabinets and the spice cupboards. And then maybe you move to like the bathroom area and your shampoos and the different things. And slowly you can have a non-toxic home and reduce the toxin load in your daily life because we're just detoxing our body. But a big part of that, like Carolina said, is our skin, right? What we put on our skin. So I'm going to go ahead and share our call to action. Please pull out your phones and do this with me. Okay. Um, our call to action is based on an interview that we did with Henry Rollins over a year ago, actually with Stephanie and Jody. And he asked us to do a call to action. This is the uh, detoxproject.org is the website that we work off of. You can go to reports. And it will take you to this page where it has this list of um, products that contain glyphosate. But now we've actually moved on to the products that are non-detect of glyphosate. So we're really excited about this because that means that we've called out, you know, nearly, you know, I think like over 50 companies that contain glyphosate in their ingredients and let them know that we were concerned. And now we get to go down the list of companies that are non-detect of glyphosate and tell them, thank you for doing their homework and not including ingredients that contain glyphosate. This is huge. And I feel like we owe them a thank you as well. So today we're going to be calling out this one called No Cow. So if you'll open up your Instagram page on your phone and go to No Cow, we're going to um, write a little post for them. And I will be dropping this exact post. You can write your own version and I'll also be dropping it in our Million Mom Movement official group. But right here, the second post that is read um, is where I put one of the comments 
from the Million Mom movement. And so just writing something similar to this, it has been brought to our attention that no cow protein bar peanut butter lovers pack has no glyphosate detected per the detox project report poison in our daily bread. This, these snacks, snack bars do not contain herbicide glyphosate per the detox project report. And we have been reaching out to companies to address this issue as a group of concerned parents at the million mom movement. We would like to thank you. So, you know, write this up in your own words. You can either post it on this same post or find another post you like to post it on. But the idea is to just shower them with love and let them know that we are so grateful that we can trust this brand, that we can go and, you know, of course, it probably does have some sugar in it, but at least we know it doesn't have the chemical glyphosate, which is known to cause cancer. And so that's what our call to action is for this particular page. And so we'd like to thank you for going and doing that and, um, you know, just thanking them. And you can go down that list. And in the past, we've called out all the companies that did have glyphosate. So if you love this mission and you want to call out some of those companies and remind them how much you care, you can go down that report yourself and go to the different Instagram pages and write, you know, to each one of them and let them know like, hey, we are concerned. I re really love your brand. There's brands on there that you may have in your household. So let those brands know that you care and that you wish they didn't contain glyphosate for the ones that do contain glyphosate. And then... um the ones that are not containing glyphosate, of course, you can just thank them for not for doing their homework and um, having a clean product. So um, lastly, I just want to let you all know to come back next week for April 28th. We're going to do a spring into nutritious and delicious recipes. Um, we have put together a really fun flip book full of recipes, most of them coming from our million mom movement info page, but it will now be a virtual flip book. So we're going to be offering you that next week and we're going to go through that together and share again, you know, some good, better, best practices, as well as some really great recipes that a lot of them contain um, our Purium products in them and all of them are you know, great for the ultimate lifestyle transformation and the ultimate lifestyle itself that we're all on. So thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to you, Stephanie. Thank you for hosting us today and everybody have an incredible weekend. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Naeva. Thank you, Million Mom Movement community. We can't move this forward, this movement without you. So God bless you and your beautiful children and all the work you're doing to elevate this mission in the world. All right. Shine on. Bye-bye.